Ink Ribbon. Kept you waiting, huh? Metal Gear Solid 2 is one of the best games of all time, and also one of the most ambitious and memorable titles on the PS2. And I'm very excited to bring you as much as I was able to find on it. From hidden gameplay mechanics to crotch grabbing, here's my list of the top 10 secrets and easter eggs in Metal Gear Solid 2. Number 10 Original Story the original story revolved around nuclear weapon inspections in Iraq and Iran, and had Solid Snake trying to stop Metal Gear while it was located on an aircraft carrier, in a certain time limit, while trying to stop Liquid Snake and his group. However, about six months into the project, the Middle East began to really heat up again and they decided they couldn't make a game with such a plot. The tanker in the final game is based on this original beta plot. Liquid had faked his death. In typical Hideo Kojima fashion, the game was originally titled Metal Gear Solid 3. When asked why, he simply said he just wanted it that way. Thankfully this was changed to Metal Gear Solid 2. Metal Gear Solid 2 was also intended to reference the novel City of Glass, notably in naming of its characters. Raiden's support team originally featured a different field commander named Colonel Daniel Quinn, Maxine Max Work, an Asian woman who saves the game data and quotes Shakespeare, and William Doc Wilson, the creator of GW. All of them take their names from key characters in the book, and all three of them would have turned out to be artificial intelligences. None of these characters came to fruition for the final game, and their roles were given to other characters, specifically Colonel Campbell, Rose, and Emma. Peter Stillman, however, still takes his name from another City of Glass character. Kojima has also cited another novel, Kobu Abe's Kangaroo Notebook, as an influence for the game. Number 9 Cut Content When you have a game that's as ambitious in scope as this one, things always will end up on the cutting room floor. One of those things was the original ending. While the whole ending wasn't removed completely, it was heavily edited from its original. While playing the game you may have noticed the jarring location change when you are on Arsenal gear and then suddenly you're in the middle of New York City. Well, that's due to a scene where Arsenal was supposed to crash through Manhattan and another scene where Raiden would cut a rope to drop an American flag, which were both removed from the game due to the recent 9-11 attacks. Similarly, a sequence from the tanker chapter was also removed where Snake would have to run through the sinking ship. You can actually see footage of this during one of the cutscenes later on. According to Kojima, the main reason it went unused is simply that it wasn't fun. There was also a few gameplay mechanics that were removed, such as guards leaving the play area to heal and come back, or having the ability to use light switches to control light and keep your enemies in the dark. Along with story and gameplay elements were two removed bosses, one named Chinaman, who was a water-based boss who can control sharks, his boss fight was also removed, and the fight with Vamp the second time was put in its place. The second boss, named Old Boy, had his concept recycled and reused later for the end in Metal Gear Solid 3. Number 8 Plagiarized Music Metal Gear Solid 2 was the final game to use this iconic theme song. This came out during allegations when Kojima was presented with audio of the original composition called Pushkin's Garland, composed by Georgi Spiridov. When he heard the song, Kojima smiled because he assumed it was a fan rendition. After fears of future lawsuits, Konami decided against using the song in any future Metal Gear games, which is why you don't hear it in the third or fourth game. Number 7 Gameplay Secrets Aside from traditional secrets, there are a lot of gameplay features that people might not know about. For example, did you know that if you shoot the question mark over guards' heads, they go into a daze for a few seconds? or that the hostages in the plant are determined by the time on your PS2's internal clock. The color of the levels in VR missions is also determined by the clock. If you stare up at seagulls long enough, they will poop on your face. 
If you keep asking the parrot if he's Ames, he will begin to repeat you. You must be Ames. You must be Ames. You must be Ames. One thing that a lot of people don't know about is the mission failed screen's info. While it may look like it's displaying gibberish, it's actually displaying a lot of your gameplay statistics, which are the following. Arm strength, which is the number of pull-ups. Prudence, the number of times you've saved. Ammo used, the number of ammo used. Alert number, how many times you've triggered an alert. Nuet, which is number of enemies killed. Damage amount, which is how much death you've taken, not counting falling. Campos X, Campos Y, and Campos Z is the camera coordinates at the time of your character's death. And Vanished Point is the name of the current room that you're in. During codec calls, you can use the analog sticks to move the camera around as characters talk, and you can hear what your character is thinking by pressing R1 for a positive thought and R2 for a negative thought. This is referred to as hanging. Not only does it allow you to stay out of the enemy's sight, when you hang from ledges, your grip gauge begins to deplete, but you can actually level up your grip strength by doing some pull-ups. You can also drop down and grab a ledge, which counts as 10 pull-ups. If you do 100 pull-ups, your gauge increases to level 2. Raiden, your grip has gotten stronger. Guess your hard work has paid off. And if you do 200 pull-ups, your gauge goes up to level 3, and you will also get codec calls congratulating you for each one. Raiden. Your grip went up again. Jack, you're truly amazing. Number six. Vamp. Vamp is one of the key bad guys in the game and in typical Metal Gear fashion has a tragic backstory. What led Vamp to becoming what he is now was surviving a church bombing and feeding on the blood of his family to stay alive, which led to him getting a taste for blood. Now you would think that's why he's called Vamp, but it actually refers to him being bisexual, as detailed by Snake in Immiscible Codec Call. Taste for blood. So that's why they call him Vamp. No, Vamp isn't for vampire, it's because he's bisexual. Where Snake talks about how Vamp was also lovers with Scott Dolph, the marine commandant from the tanker, who is also Fortune's father. Aside from being able to control knives and have slight control over shadows, he also has an abnormally low body temperature, which is why you can see his breath during some cutscenes. Vamp was originally a female character until Yoji Shinkawa saw flamenco dancer Joaquin Cortez. He then changed the character concept to be a male character. The flamenco dancing is also what inspired Vamp's movement, as seen throughout the game. And one more notable thing about Vamp is that if you move the camera during this part of the ending cutscene, you can see him standing in the background watching you before disappearing. Number 5 Movie References As you would expect, this game has more movie references than the average game. I was able to count about 30, but these are the ones that I thought were worth mentioning. First is Titanic, a movie reference that went right under everyone's nose. So the game starts with a ship that sinks. Then the plant ends up sinking as well, which was partially inspired by the movie, but you also have the relationship between Rose and Raiden, and in case you forgot, his real name is Jack. Jack! Next isn't a movie, but it's still a nice nod, and that nod is to The X-Files. When the ninja uses the codename Deep Throat, Raiden is confused and the ninja immediately switches to the codename Mr. X. Both of these are codenames used by the informant during a story arc in the second season. My name is... My name is Pliskin. Eric. And lastly, but probably the most obvious reference, is 1981's Escape from New York. The main character's name is Snake Plissken, and I'm pretty sure if you take a look at him, I don't have to tell you that he was a big influence on Snake's character throughout the series. Call me Snake. Number 4 Dirty Bits There's not really any clever way to say this, so I'll just say it. This game has a lot of perverted stuff in it. Like, a lot. So, of course, that means it gets its own entry. First, we'll cover the tanker. Throughout the tanker are various posters, like this one. If you lock yourself in a locker with one of these posters and zoom in, you can hear Snake kissing them. If you call Otacon while examining them, 
Otacon alludes to Snake uh, taking care of his personal needs, and you even get a trophy for it in the HD remaster. If Snake knocks on the top half of this poster, it will make a jiggly sound. But if you knock on the bottom half, it will automatically cause an alert status. Speaking of posters, there are also a few hidden posters that you can see if you zoom in. Though, if you shoot them, they explode, also causing an alert status. Speaking of dirty, there's a guard in deck A that has flies all around him. If you body check him, he will drop a rotten ration. And if you take it with you, the flies will follow Snake around which can give away your position to the enemy. Next we have a lot of fun to be had with the photos you can take in the game. When Otacon has you send him pictures of Metal Gear, you can send him pictures of the posters I mentioned previously. He will get annoyed with Snake only to blush and back up the photos for his personal collection. But this isn't a photo of Metal Gear anyway. Sorry, but you're gonna have to go back and shoot another set. I'll just make a backup of this one. If you keep sending him photos of Scott Dolph, he will get increasingly annoyed. Look, if you like him so much, I'll print this out and make a panel out of it. Put it over your bed or something. Will you please stop sending me pictures of the Commandant? And lastly, if you send him a few select images, like the muscle poster, Otacon will question Snake's sexuality. Uh, this explains a lot. Not that there's anything wrong with keeping it to yourself. I mean, you know, it's your life and everything. While going through the holds, you come across a projector that you can use to distract the guards. If you keep pushing the button, a video sequence of a girl will play. If you continue, another video will start on the second screen, but this will result in a game over. Now moving on to the plant chapter, if you go into the bathroom in strut C and go into first person at the urinal, this codex sequence plays out. Right, and what are you looking at? Oh, I see. Rosemary. What? Could you excuse him for a moment? Huh? You know, so he can... Oh, I get it. <sighs> Jack, um, let me know when you're done, okay? Mm-hmm. Now if you go into the women's restroom and call from inside one of the stalls while holding a magazine, you get a very agitated Rose and Colonel. Right, and what are you doing there with that? I don't believe it. What are you thinking? And during your duties? I highly disapprove. Even though every one of us is scrambling to do our best to support you, this and what exactly are you going to do? Drool over pictures of voluptuous girls? Exactly. At least use a picture of me instead. What? What? I mean... I completely disapprove. When you get to the area with Emma's parrot, if you watch the guard's behavior, you'll notice the ones in the area are a bit frisky compared to other guards. Aside from periodically looking at pictures of girls on the computer, if you watch them from outside the window, you'll see two guards having a conversation with a lot of hand gestures that imply they are talking about a woman's proportions. When you get to Emma, if you knock her down and crawl on top of her, then call her, you get an understandably angry reaction from her. You perv! Unbelievable! What do you think you're doing at a time like this? What is wrong with you? You suck, you know that? And lastly, if you're spotted while running around naked and run all the way back to the torture chamber, you can press against it and pretend to be bound, covered by a clever angle and a straw. A guard will find you and comment on Raiden's manhood before leaving. No problem here. Huh? Wish I had that. Return your positions. Number three. Raiden. While Raiden does mean thunder and lightning, the primary reason for his codename is in reference to a World War II Japanese Imperial aircraft of the same name, specifically to reinforce that he was a tool and a weapon to be disposed of once it served its purpose. While getting a heavily negative reaction due to the bait-and-switch method used by Kojima, Raiden was used to give the player the feeling of what it would feel like to work alongside Solid Snake. The plot twist came from Terminator 2 where the twist is that Arnold was not the villain. When rescuing the president, he grabs Raiden's crotch and is surprised that he's a male. According to the game script, he actually assumed that Raiden was Olga Grilukovich at first. Only briefly alluded to in the game, Raiden is specifically chosen for his role for a reason. 
While he was an extremely lethal child soldier and surpassed all others, it was actually thanks to the Patriots. They implanted his brain with a high concentration of nanomachines, which not only helped him forget about his past and focus on his war skills, but also to use his brain as a backup for some of their AI. This is what Solidus is referring to in this cutscene. High concentration of cerebral implants. Have they altered your memory too? Number 2 Snake In the document of Metal Gear Solid is a model of Snake showing an early test, most likely while they were still deciding on an art style for the game. You might notice that when you talk to Iroquois Pliskin on the codec, his frequency is the same as Master Miller's from Metal Gear Solid 1. When you first run into Snake, if you picked up the shaver, Raiden will give it to him, and if you did, later in the game he will appear clean shaven. While covering Emma with the sniper rifle, if you aim the microphone at Snake, you can hear his thoughts, specifically about Emma. Do I need to clear things with Otacon before I ask her out? If you get really close to Snake and look at him in first person, his breath will actually fog up the screen. What are you thinking? Number one. Codec calls. To wrap up this list, I thought it would be fun to mention a few optional codec calls. Like the first game, Metal Gear Solid 2 has hours and hours of dialogue, so as you can imagine, there's a bit too much to cover here, but here are some of the good ones. What? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, good luck. You'll probably need it with that stupid box on your head. If you call Snake while he's sleeping, you can hear him having nightmares and sleep talking. He's still sleeping. Liquid! Huh? <laughs> If you call Emma while she's sleeping, she also talks in her sleep, but while dreaming about her brother. Similarly, if you hit either of them and immediately call them, you get these calls. When fighting Fat Man, if you wait until there's 30 seconds left on the clock, Rose will tell a very frustrated Raiden to look under his body. We're running out of time. Have you checked under Fat Man's body? What? Of course not. It can't be there. You don't know that. Okay. What evidence do you have that it's there? Just a hunch, alright? Look, Rose. I know what I'm doing. And this is my life on the line. You don't have any experience in this type of work, so just- <sighs> Raiden. Don't turn down a good suggestion when you hear one. Check it out. Before you get to Emma, if you stare at her through the window, Rose gets very jealous and tells him to stop getting distracted. Jack? Jack? Uh, oh, Rose, I is that you? Uh, what's up? What's up? You were looking for a pretty long time. Something catch your eye? No, no, just um, scouting for the enemy. Somehow I have a hard time believing you. Enough. Hurry up and return to the mission at hand. While the colonel's glitching out, if you call him enough Snake. times, he will get irate and ask you if you're trying to use some sort of trick. You wouldn't be trying to give yourself a bogus score using some ingenious trick, would you? That's just about as low as anyone could possibly stoop. Funny enough, this call will actually refill all of your ammo. And last, but definitely the best codec call in the game, is with Mei Ling. Yup. If you call Otacon and save your game about 13 times, she will interrupt him to correct him on a proverb. When people are at a loss for words, a kind of vestigial... Hey! Ah! What a crock! What did you do with that little cheat sheet I made you? Uh... Oh, there it is! <gasps> hey! Uh, that's really, uh... How could you do that? You know how busy I am and you- It's not what you think. Oh? So what am I thinking? What's going on over there? Oh, hi, Snake. Do you know the Otacon's been- Uh, Mei Ling, we're in the middle of a mission and everything, so can we, you know- Hmm. Fine. Sure. And Snake, the real meaning of care avoids air is that if you're cautious, you can avoid making serious mistakes. Even if you've gotten used to the mission, watch what you do. Good luck. Yeah, Snake. Good luck. You? I'm not done with. <laughs> Let's discuss this, shall we? Uh, 
What happened to Mei Ling? He... She got mad and went offline. What did you do? Nothing. Now don't we need to get back to the mission? So much to do, so little time. <sighs> and that is it for this list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'd love to know what other games you'd like me to cover in the future. If I missed anything from this game, please leave a comment down below or you can find me on Twitter at Games. I hope all of you are staying safe and productive and I will see you in the next one. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to my bronze, silver, and gold Patreon supporters. Thanks to you, I can make videos without worrying about demonetization and grow my channel faster.